Hello everyone. Welcome to the Learning Express YouTube channel. In a series of common source amplifier, in this video, I will tell you about the common source amplifier with active load. So, uh, previously we have discussed uh, the common source amplifier with the three different topology. First, we discussed with the RD load. After that, uh, current source load and uh, diode connected load. But what is the need of active load and uh, how active load is used here and uh, how we will get the amplification and what are the uh, exactly advantages of active load. So I will discuss these things very uh, step by step. So the first thing is that uh, what is the active load here and uh, what is an active load. So till now we have seen that the M2 transistor is just uh, sitting. Uh, without any kind of amplification. It is simply providing uh, whether a constant current source or whether it is a load impedance. But in this case, the transistor M2 will also contribute to the gain, a small signal gain. It is not only uh, taking the biasing voltage, it is not only taking the biasing voltage, but it is also taking the input. So previously, we have seen that this transistor M2 have this uh, gate uh, bind with some biasing voltage BB. If this gate is bind with uh, biasing voltage, then this transistor M2 can work only as a load or a constant current source. If it's working in saturation or triode region or deep triode region, depending on the value of VB, it can work as like current source or load. But here for the active load, I have uh, given the input to the M2 also. If the input is also given to the M2, that we usually give to the uh, M1, then we can say it is an active load. Now your load is taking the active input that is a V in. So depending on that, this stage is also or this topology is also known as the complementary common source stage. Complementary common source stage. So this design is basically nothing but a CMOS inverter kind of thing. And if both the devices are in saturation, from the characteristics we can see that, and uh, yeah, from the characteristics we can see that for the input output carrier, if this is your input. And this is our output. So for the input output carrier in saturation region, in this region, we can see that both the devices are in saturation. And for the very small change in the input, the output is changing suddenly. So if I draw the more ideal characteristics, this uh, curve is more steep. Oh, yeah, this curve is more steep. It is like this. So we can see that for this much variation in input, the output is changing uh, with a large amount. So if this is a change in your input delta V in, your output is changing with this much amount. So your output is changing with this much amount. So this is the change in output delta V out. So if this is a change of few millivolts, it is suppose one millivolt, it can be of hundred of millivolts or can say few volts only, few volts also. So here we are uh, seeing the amplification action if the both the devices are acting in saturation. So this is nothing but a like a uh, CMOS inverter. So now the point is how to calculate the small signal gain for this device. So yeah, so this is the active load. So now the question is why active load? What is the need of active load? So <clears throat> instead of constant current source, M2 can also act as an amplifying device. So this thing I explained here, if we connect the gate of M2 with the input, it can also amplify the signal. So we will get the contribution of M2 as an amplifier also. Previously, we, are, we were getting only the amplification action from M1. But now in this case, we are also getting the amplification action from M2. So we are nothing but getting the two times amplification action. So we will get the more gain here. So M2 will also contribute to the gain. So in the second point, I have mentioned this thing. So gain will be more. Yeah. So yeah, this gain will be more. <laughs> so that's why we are using this M2 as an active load. Now the point is how to calculate the gain. So if I draw the small signal model, we can draw the gain. So I'll also tell you about the intuitive analysis. So this is nothing but a small signal model here. For the above device, that is the PMOS device, the source is grounded here. The source is grounded here. And between these, they have nothing taken like yeah, this. If you are taking the direction of current in above side uh, for the PMOS, uh, PMOS device, you will get this uh, V2 and depending on the GM2 V2. So this is the structure. So this is almost a symmetric structure. If I take its uh, 
common uh, small single structure we will get like this is your input this is your input and uh, this is your vgs overall and this current is nothing but addition of these two currents so it is like gm1 plus gm2 of vgs so i commonly taking is vgs not vg uh, v1 or v2 and this load is nothing but parallel of this so this is a symmetric symmetric structure so this is a symmetric structure if i taking the above structure above and if i overlap the above structure over this lower structure we will get this structure so this impedance is nothing but r out one parallel to r out two so from this small signal you if you are applying the kvl kcl properly you will get this this is the output voltage so yeah this is the output voltage so we'll get the gain here as v out by v in as v out by v in that is a gain is nothing but minus gm1 plus gm2 multiplied with r naught one parallel with r naught two so this is the total gain so this thing can be done also intuitively uh, yeah so in this figure if i take the if i draw this structure so for this m2 and uh, yeah for this m1 so if i separately draw this v in so because v in connected to both the inputs of m1 and m2 it is your m1 it is your m2 so this is your vdd and this is your output so if i consider for the intuitive analysis i am telling one way that you use here superposition principle on the basis of superposition principle we can see that if i am considering initial as a m1 only the amplifying device then if m1 is the only amplifying device then consider this uh, uh, voltage or can say input voltage of second transistor is zero and if i am considering the second transistor input voltage is zero because i am applying here superposition principle so one by one i will uh, i'll take or i'll consider the amplification action of both devices so yeah superposition principle i am considering here so if i am considering that the m1 is the only amplifying device then the input of second transistor is considered as zero for the sake of simplicity because i am using a superposition principle so don't confuse with that uh, the gate of m2 is connected with dc bias it is not a dc bias it is actually the in input is connected to the gate of m2 also but i am considering zero because i am applying the superposition here so this is the intuitive view of analysis now m1 is the only device where i am applying the input here for the case one because the superposition principle is i am mentioning superposition again and again so that you should not be confused with the connection of gate voltage of m2 transistor with the ground so this is the output one so this output is one or is nothing but uh, this yeah this output so th now this device, this device is going to offer the r naught two if i'm looking from this side and this device is going to offer the r naught one so overall if i calculate the gain for the case one it uh, called av1 that is your uh, v out one y v in uh, that is equal to minus gm1 r01 parallel to r02 or can say the v out1 is equal to minus gm1 r01 parallel to r02 multiplied with input voltage so yeah this is the output one now now the first, this is the case one when the m1 is the only uh, uh, amplifying device and now this is the case two when m2 is the only amplifying device if i'm considering the m2 as a only amplifying device because it is a pmos device so this is a ground and the input is this and the output is taken from the drain so this is a v out two and this device is acting as a load only because this uh, gate is also grounded for the superposition <coughs> yeah so this is going to offer your r not one and this is going to offer you r not two so for this device the v out two is equal to minus because input is applied at the gm2 so gm2 is here minus gm2 r not one parallel with r not two so it is going to give you uh, okay yeah, v in also so overall from both the cases if i sum up these cases i'll get that overall output as v out as v out one plus v out two which are nothing but minus of gm1 plus gm2 r naught one parallel with r naught two 
into V in. So gain is nothing but if I take the V in, in a denominator, so gain will come here. Whatever we have calculated, minus GM1 plus GM2, R01 parallel with R02. So with the single stage, when this M2 is a load or a current source, we are only getting uh, this GM1 terms. So the additional term of the gain is added here with the GM2 is added here. So this is the advantage. This is the advantage is we are getting the additional term that is a GM2 here. So yeah, okay. So we are getting the additional term GM2. So more gain is obtained here. More gain is obtained here. So what amount of gain is added here? This is nothing but GM2 R01 parallel to R02. So this is the more added gain. So so yeah, this is again calculation intuitive way that I have mentioned here only. Yeah, that I have done here only. So from the intuitive analysis, first consider uh, this as an input and this is a load. And second case, uh, consider M2 as a input device and M1 as a load. So these are the case one and case two of superposition principle. So these cases are used for the superposition principle. And individually we'll calculate the output voltage and some of the out output voltage will get the overall uh, more gain here. So now the point is that what are the limitations of this particular thing? So we can see that in the bias current of two transistors is a strong function of process variations. Because in this particular figure, we can see that the VGS01 VGS2 is equal to VVD only. So if I sum up the gate voltages of both, so this is your VGS and this is also your VGS. So VGS of both the transistors giving nothing but a diode voltage only, the power voltage only. Your VGS1, that is your VGS1 plus VSG2, these two voltages are giving VD value. So, because these are the input voltages or uh, these are the voltages which are providing the current term GM VGS. So, some of these two voltages depending on the uh, supply voltage directly. Uh, so yeah, so if there is any variation in the supply voltage, this supply voltage variation directly going to reflect on the output voltage or can say gain of the uh, amplifier stage. So, and we can see that the process variation is going to occur here. This, uh, if this your VDD, the supply voltage is varying with the temperature or any process variation there, this variation is going to reflect directly at the gain because this uh, VGS1 and VGS2 are summing up and giving the VD value. So yeah, this point I have mentioned here, this is the first limitation, then process variation and the variation in VDD or the threshold voltage directly translate to the changes in the uh, drain currents. So it means is that only your gain is going to directly affected uh, by the temperature or the process variations. Uh, second limitation is that the circuit amplifies supply voltage variation or this is called the supply noise. And I have mentioned here, the supply voltage is nothing but directly interacting with your inputs VGS1 and VGS2. So there is any fluctuation, the small signal variation in the supply voltage is going to reflect at the output. And this, re this reflection is going to occur because of uh, direct coupling of your supply voltage to the output. So this supply voltage to the output uh, coupling, this, uh, this is termed as the, uh, I can say, unwanted gain. This VDD that is uh, looking actually the DC voltage, but not a DC voltage. This VDD is nothing but a fluctuation in the supply voltage. This VDD is fluctuation. This VDD uh, that I am using in the gain expression, this is nothing but a fluctuation in supply voltage. Fluctuation in supply voltage. This is also called the supply noise. So if there is any supply fluctuation, it is going to occur at the outputs and between these output and this supply fluctuation, we calculate the gain. So this is the gain. So this is the unwanted gain because of direct coupling of supply voltage to the output. So these are the, these two are the limitation of this active source. So if I'm using uh, M2 as an active load, uh, we have the advantage that we are getting the more gain. The, uh, GM2 term is the added function or at the added term in gain. But there is a unnecessary uh, unnecessary effects of uh, supply noise and this is the unwanted gain is occurred. So I think, yeah, this is the figure I have taken for this supply noise. So if I'm considering that your uh, uh, suppose gate are connected to the some 
BB or say bias voltage so that their M2 and M1 are in saturation. So in that case, this supply noise is going to affect your output here. If there is fluctuation in supply and this fluctuation is directly going to translate uh, this day, sub, yeah, this fluctuation is uh, going to translate to your output only. So overall, this is going to give you the unwanted gain, which is nothing but the output by this VD fluctuation. So that this thing I mentioned in the previous slide. Okay. So I think I have uh, covered the, what the active load and uh, how this active load is used for the amplification. What is the small signal analysis and what is the intuitive analysis for gain calculation. And lastly, I discussed the limitations of this active load, which are nothing but a process variation is going to directly affect your output gain or gain or the output voltage. And this uh, supply noise uh, supply noise or can fluctuation in supply are also going to affect the output directly because there is a strong coupling between the supply voltage and output the, due to the vgs1 and vgs2 uh, summing up and giving the supply voltage so i think this is enough for this video and in the coming video i'll discuss the common source amplifier topology with the triode load so i think uh, i tried to cover many things here if you have uh, some doubt you can ask so Thank you.